Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome to another episode of the Virtual Photographer's Guide. Today, I'll be taking a look at Elden Ring. Now, you might be thinking, hang on, Elden Ring doesn't have a photo mode. Well, yes, you are correct, unless you include the mods available on the PC. But for us console gamers, Elden Ring doesn't feature any dedicated photo mode or mods to allow in-game photography. But as I always say on Twitter, no photo mode, no problem. In this episode, I'm going to break down a variety of ways you can get around this issue, featuring how you can take portraits of your character, use different lighting effects, identify landscape photography tools, useful items and some general tips to help you on your way. Ok, let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of the HUD on screen. We don't want this because it will you know, appear on every screenshot we do. So how do we get rid of it? Well, we bring up the pause menu, then we go to system, then we go to sound and display. Scroll down and turn the HUD option to off. I would also turn off show tutorials, make that have off as the setting because again, you don't want on screen tutorials showing up in your photographs. With the HUD removed, you now have a clean palette to work with. In terms of actually taking the photo, you will need to press the share button on PlayStation or the screenshot button on Xbox. Ok, so we've got rid of the HUD, now we need to isolate the four items that we can allocate to the hotkeys. If you don't use hotkeys, it's very simple. On Xbox, you hold down the Y button, then up, down, left and right on the D-pad, use items that you've equipped. For the PlayStation, it's the triangle button. The first item I would recommend is the telescope. To purchase the telescope, you'll have to visit the merchant at the Church of Ella in Limgrave. The item will set you back about 500 runes. Now the telescope allows you to view the game world in first person from a slightly zoomed in perspective. But be aware, you can't zoom in or zoom out or move your feet whilst using the item. Think of the telescope like a fixed focal length lens. If you want to reframe, you'll have to exit the telescope and reposition your feet accordingly. What would I recommend the telescope for? Well, it's great if you want to capture landscapes, photos of the environment or surrounding scenes, or even portraits of other characters in the game. Also, if you're playing in co-op, you can use the telescope to photograph your teammate and vice versa. So it's a very helpful tool if you want to remove your character from view and get a nice clean image of the game world. The second item I would recommend is the lantern. This item can be purchased from two different merchants. The isolated merchant located in the Weeping Peninsula and the nomadic merchant in Leonia of the Lakes. And the lantern will set you back 1800 runes. So what effect does the lantern have on your photographs? Well, it adds a soft warm light source to your character. So if you're in a dark tunnel and you want to illuminate your character using a warm temperature, this is a great option. You can also use torches, but you do have to hold them in one hand. And this may not suit your photograph because you might have a shield and a sword. You might want to capture that kind of look. So the lantern, it's like an invisible torch that's not as powerful as the torch light, but it's, it's pretty good nonetheless. Yes, maybe it's a little bit overpowered in terms of the warmth, but it's a good option, again, if you want to add a warm glow to your shot. The third item I would recommend are the glowstones. Glowstones can be found in the game world, but the easiest way to obtain them is to craft them yourself. You'll need the Nomadic Warriors cookbook, one ruin fragment and one dew kissed herba. The glowstones emit a soft white light to the surrounding environment for a limited time. But why should you consider using these? Well, lighting is everything in photography. Adding a bright source light can add cool shadows and a more defined feeling to your image. It's a bit like when a real life photographer uses a flash bulb that's not attached to their camera. They place the flash to the side of the subject, then when they take the photo, the light creates a dynamic visual effect, featuring strong white light on one side and rich dark shadow on the other. Now let's look at a practical example of this. So here's our character, we're standing near a wall, ready to do a gesture, ready to take a photo. We'll reposition the camera to one side, and there it is, a nice portrait using the available natural light. Not bad. But how would that look if we used a glowstone? So we'll drop the stone and we'll set up the shot in the exact same way. 
and that's what we ended up with, the same photo but with vastly different lighting. Here is the natural light shot again, and here is the glowstone shot. You can see the difference, natural light it's a little bit muted, while the glowstone has that flash photography effect. More dynamic, better shadows, and it just makes the image stand out more. The fourth item I would recommend are the rainbow stones. Rainbow stones can be found in the game world, but again, the easiest way to get them is to craft them yourself. To do so, you'll need one ruin fragment. The rainbow stones are similar to glowstones in that they light up the darker areas, but this time with a colorful tint. They're good for adding a subtle ambient color and lighting change to your subject or the environment. Or if you're feeling creative, you can place them in the background and use them to frame your subject with lots of pretty colors in the distance. They're possibly not as useful as the glowstones, but they're still worth trying out. Have a play with them, see what you can do. Okay, so those are the four hotkey items I would equip, but what about gestures? Gestures are like equipable emotes that instruct your character to, to do a stance change, from giving a round of applause, beating their chest, or curling up in a ball if the game gets the better of you. Now, gestures can't be purchased as such. You have to unlock them via interactions with characters in the world. But gestures, they're a great way to reposition your character before you set up your shot. Think about the gestures you have available in the menu, which ones suit your character and suit the situation you're in. Bear in mind though, a lot of the gestures are time restricted, so you might want to focus on the ones that last longer, otherwise you'll have to keep going back to the menu to restart the gesture. So here are a few examples of using gestures. Here's a nice one, kneeling down praying to the gods. Here's another one, getting ready for the battle. And here's another one, just hanging out with some new friends. So pretty useful, play around with them, see what you can create. One other feature that you might want to use is the pause menu. Scroll down to the status section, then press the button that changes the view. This will then showcase your character on the right hand side with a neutral backdrop. This is great if you just want to screenshot your tarnished to cut out in Photoshop or create some kind of character card. Okay, so we've got rid of the HUD, we've equipped a few items, but what about non-equipable items you can find? Firstly, if you want to change the time of day, visit one of the Sites of Grace and click on the Past Time option. This is basically like those settings in photo modes that let you adjust the time of day. Why is this helpful? Well, as the day changes, so does the available light and the ambient color temperature. As the sun moves, so does the impact the light has on the world and your character. This is something I used to do when I started real life photography. I'd find an area that I liked, and then I would go back there several times, different days, in the morning, lunchtime, afternoon, sunset, nighttime, because the time of day does have a massive impact on the mood and the atmosphere of a location. So if you've found a place that you want to shoot in, revisit it several times and see what you can create as the conditions change. The next item you can use are the bird's eye telescopes. These are fixed telescopes in the game world and allow you to get a bird's eye perspective of the environment. They're great for creating panoramic landscape shots, but they do have a menu icon on the right hand side of the screen, which is slightly annoying. Another tip is to play the game in co-op. This way you and a friend can take photographs of each other with the handheld telescope. Having two photographers helps as you can both add light sources to help out your friend or put your creative minds together to get around the lack of a photo mode. Also think about your created character and your loadout. I would strongly recommend you create a variety of favorites in the character creation menu. Then when you need a change, visit Renala Queen of the Full Moon to alter your appearance. But bear in mind, you can only do this once you've reached a certain point in the game. One more thing to consider is the environmental light sources. Every location has its own style, color palette and available light, whether it's the time of day, torches, campfires, etc. These things can be used as features or ways to illuminate your character when taking a portrait. And remember, lighting is everything. How a subject is lit can completely change the feeling of an image. So try lots of things out and see which method works best for you. So we've addressed the HUD and items, but what about the issues you might encounter to hinder your photography? 
Firstly, framing can be an issue because the game automatically places your character in the center of the frame. But there are ways around it, like using the walls to glitch out the camera, thus changing your position in the frame. It's not ideal, but it's still better than nothing. Another problem with no photo mode is no ability to edit the photo. So you might want to take your screenshot, then edit it in Photoshop, Instagram, or some other photo editing apps. So with an edit, like first thing I look at is what could be improved? So usually with a screenshot, it's generally a little bit flat looking because this game has a kind of a, a bit of a washed out color palette at times. So with this sort of image, I would probably increase the clarity. I would probably add a very tiny bit of noise to it just to give it some texture because it doesn't have the crystal clarity you would probably want on the detail. Then I would probably go to the light areas, make them a bit lighter maybe add the contrast to create definition between light and dark. And then it's really about color. Do I want to split tone it, i.e. do I want the shadows to have a color tint? Do I want the light areas to have a color tint? Does it need more color? Do I want to take the color out? Does a vignette help? Like if my character is central, do I want to have a vignette, i.e. making the center of the image more defined? So these are all things that I think about. And really it's just about taking what's the original shot how can I make that look more palatable to me in terms of what I want to achieve? Okay, so that's an edit, but you know, in terms of this game, the biggest issue is that you don't have a photo mode, so you're not gonna be able to capture everything you want. So it can be quite frustrating, but keep trying, keep thinking outside the box and you will get there. Right, what about some general tips? So use the telescope to photograph portraits of the NPCs or the landscapes. But again, think about where you need to stand as the telescope is zoomed in by default. Gestures, they're a great way to alter the mood of the shot, whether that's, you know, something moody, funny or weird. Think about the elevation of the shot and the angle, because these again can really alter the feeling. Also, I'd make sure you kill the enemies in the area first because you don't need that hassle. And don't carry around 100,000 runes while taking photographs because you're vulnerable without the HUD. Mix up your character loadouts, mix up your character's visual appearance, use the walls to glitch out the camera when you're in narrow sections. And remember, experimentation is the key. You won't always be able to get it perfect, but keep trying. And there are lots of gorgeous shots to be had. Right, to wrap up the episode, I'm just going to share three locations that I love photographing in Elden Ring. Firstly is the Royal Capital. This is possibly the most beautiful area in any game that I've ever played. It's a stunning gold tinted city with amazing vistas and beautiful architecture. But this is also a pretty dangerous area, so think about that if you're going to photograph here. The second location is down in the southeast region. It's near the castle where the festival happens and it's where you fight Radan. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend photographing the area during the boss fight unless you're an absolute masochist. But once it's clear, you've got this sandy battlefield with a really beautiful red sky and it's really striking for photography. Lastly is Stormvale Castle. This is one of the first areas you'll visit and it's got a, a really immaculate entrance area the steep steps, the stunning ramparts, and all in all, it's just an amazing place to capture a sense of scale in Elden Ring. But there aren't many other places to capture. Which ones do you enjoy photographing? Put that one in the comments and we'll see what other people like to capture. Okay, well that wraps up the episode for Elden Ring. Hopefully these methods will help you be able to take shots, improve your skills in it, make it a bit easier, a bit more fun. Yes, it can be a bit annoying that there isn't a photo mode, but again, no photo mode, no problem. If anything, the lack of a mode, it will make you think more creatively and potentially improve your core photography skills. So explore the lands between lowly tarnished and don't forget to tweak the shots using the hashtag no photo mode, no problem, which I'm almost certain me and my friend Sam started. Cool, we're done for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you enjoy my content, please like the video, please subscribe, please comment, click on the bell so you get notifications or head over to my Patreon if you wanna additionally support my work and make more of these videos possible. But for now, this is Photography Gamer signing off. Thank you.